In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to process a FITS image using the JS9 application in Youth Astronet. I'm going to start with an image already opened up in Youth Astronet. If you aren't sure how to get to this step, you may first want to watch the tutorial How to Open a FITS Image with Youth Astronet. Anyway, I've got a FITS image of the Whirlpool Galaxy open, which was taken sometime last night. Right now, it just looks like a dark patch of sky with a few suggestions of stars. But, if we process the image to bring out the subtle details, then we'll get a much better idea of what the Whirlpool Galaxy is all about. With telescope images, you get incredibly specific information about the brightness of each point in the sky. Like this point here. And this point here. And since there are so many stars and galaxies and gas and dust, the brightness of each point is probably different from the point next to it. When a telescope takes your picture, its light detector records brightness for each point in the sky. This brightness translates into a pixel value for each pixel in your image. You can find pixel value listed here under the image. And watch what happens to the value as I move my mouse over the image. The pixel value changes because every pixel has its own value to represent brightness. Right here, in this area of darkness, this one pixel has a pixel value of 319. And over here, where this bright star is, this pixel has a pixel value of 4021. JS9 4L then assigns every pixel a shade between black and white, based on the pixel value. You can see how the pixel shade is assigned based on this color bar down here. Lower pixel values in our range are assigned dark shades of gray and the lowest value in the range is set to absolute black. Any pixel value below the lowest value in the range is set to absolute black as well. Higher pixel values in our range are assigned lighter shades of gray, and the highest value in the range is set to absolute white. Anything above the highest value in the range is called fully saturated and gets set to absolute white as well. You can change the way these shades of black, gray, and white get assigned to different pixel values using the controls down here, which I'll explain in a minute. But first, I want to talk about scale. At the moment, our image looks almost completely black, which isn't very useful since we can't even tell that the Whirlpool Galaxy is there. We want to know what's happening in all this darkness, so let's bring out the detail. And the first step is choosing an appropriate scale. For very dim objects, like the Whirlpool Galaxy, we usually want to switch to logarithmic scale, or log. The log scale favors very dim objects, particularly those that aren't much brighter than the background sky. To change our scale to log, I'll go up to the scale drop-down menu and choose log, like so. See how that enhanced all the detail that used to be too dim to see? JS9 always starts in linear scale which works best for bright objects, like those in our solar system or star clusters in the Milky Way. If you want to use log scale, you'll have to select it yourself. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide which scale works best for your image. The next issue is that we changed the coloration of the dark background sky as well. We would like the darkest parts where there aren't any stars to be absolute black, but everything is turned gray in our image. Why'd this happen? Well, when I move my mouse across the background sky, you'll see that the pixel values are all around 315 or 320, but the lowest brightness value available on our color scale is zero. The highest brightness value available on our color scale is 4095. These values at the edge of our color scale are determined by the low brightness limit and the high brightness limit, which you can see are set to zero and 4095. As a result of this range, the background sky pixel values of 315 or 320 all fall right around here on the scale and get assigned a medium gray color. My goal is to increase the contrast between the background sky and the dimmest features of my target object. So first, I need to set the low brightness limit to the pixel value of the background sky, which gets up to about 320. Now, everything with a pixel value of 320 or lower is set to absolute black. At the same time, the dim parts of the Whirlpool Galaxy, which have pixel values that are not much brighter than 320, are suddenly pretty sharp against the black of the background sky. I'm going to redo this process to show you one more thing. Watch what happens to the color bar when I change the low brightness limit to 320. 
Did you see how the values changed? It's important to pay attention to this relationship between pixel values and the color scale in JS9. We can change the high brightness limit the same as the low brightness limit. Right now, everything with pixel values of 4095 or above are colored white. If I bring the high brightness limit down to 3030, now pixel values of 3030 or higher will be set to absolute white. There's no right answer for how to set your high brightness limit. Instead, play around with it to see how different values enhance your image. I'm going to set my high brightness limit to 1000 because I feel like it. Next, let's figure out what stretch contrast and shift bias do. Let's look at the color bar again. Notice that these colors shift from black to white very smoothly. Black changes into dark gray, dark gray into medium gray, medium gray into light gray, and light gray into white. This happens when we have a contrast value of 1. However, as I raise the stretch contrast value, notice what happens to the color bar. All of a sudden, the black and white shades take up a much larger area, and the dark, medium, and light grays get squeezed. Lower the contrast value, and they stretch back out. Squeeze, stretch. Squeeze, stretch. When the contrast squeezes, it means that the color scale changes from black to white over a much narrower range of pixel values. In this case, anything over a pixel value of 400 or so gets set to white, and anything under a pixel value of about 325 gets set to black. As a result, most of the pixels in this image have been set to the extremes, either black or white, and there is much less gray. The shift bias slider changes these cutoff points for black and white to the left or right along the color bar. Right now, the cutoffs look like they are pixel values of 325 for black and 400 for white. But if I slide the bias slider to the right, the cutoff values shift to the right on the color bar. Now anything above a pixel value of 500 or so is set to white, and anything below a pixel value of 340 is set to black. If I slide the bias slider down, the cutoff values shift to the left on the color bar. As we shift around the bias slider, the width of this contrast squeeze on the color scale doesn't change, but where the squeeze occurs on the color scale does. If bias increases, the contrast range shifts to the right along the scale. If bias decreases, the contrast range shifts to the left along the scale. Why do we use these controls? Well, sometimes you'll find you don't care as much about the sections of your image that are bright, and you want to focus your color scale on very low pixel values to bring out the detail, like the structure of dust lane regions. Or maybe you don't care about the dark areas and want to bring out the detail of the brightest spots, like the area in the very center of the galaxy. The controls give us a chance to focus on specific ranges in our image, and to fine-tune the details. Astronomers are thinking about the same things. They stretch and shift ranges to focus on the key areas of their image data that they need to study. One more thing before we go. You don't have to use a black and white color scale. JS9 comes up with a bunch of different color maps that you can apply to your data. Go up to the color dropdown, and you can choose from color maps like Watermelon and Inferno and Cool. Huh, that is pretty cool. Just remember that the brightness limits, contrast, and bias sliders will work exactly the same as they did before. It's just that now you are stretching, shifting, and adjusting a color scale instead of a black and white scale. With rainbow, for example, the lower pixel values get set to black and purple, and the higher pixel values get set to red and orange. Play around with them and see how they change the details of your image. And once you get the hang of it, you might want to watch the tutorial How to Create an RGB Image with Youth Astronet to try a new challenge.